What's up everybody, it's Max Brown here for another breakdown. In this week's episode, we are looking at the two minute drill. It's been two weeks in a row. USC has had late game two minute drill success. So in today's episode, we're gonna put on uh, the Graham Harrell hat, put on the Keaton Slovis helmet, look at this drive through the lens of an offensive coordinator and a quarterback, see what they're processing, going through their reads, and uh, dissecting why this drive was successful and uh, why it ultimately led to another uh, USC win. So enjoy the video. Thanks for checking it out. All right, so the drive starts, minute 35 left in the game. You're starting on your own 25-yard line. You have all three timeouts. Let's check out how the drive starts here. Four. Here's Slovis. Over the middle. Nice throw. So if you're Keaton Slovis at the start of this drive, the two things you're thinking about right away is one, I cannot take a sack. Sacks kill two-minute drives. I cannot take sacks. The second one is just find yourself the first completion. That is the number one coach, or I guess number two coaching point when talking to quarterbacks about two-minute drills is just find the first completion. I don't care if it's a dink and dunk to the to the running back, if it's a vertical concept like we just saw right there or if it's somewhere in between. Getting the first completion, getting your offense in rhythm, in motion, is so important, and getting the defense on its heels. So that's that's the mindset there of Keaton Slovis. Graham elects to call a four verticals concept, which you might not necessarily know right away because Amon Ross St. Brown in the slot here kind of does a, a dig route action, but it's a four, it's a four verts concept these two inside guys are just reading and, and reading the leverage of, this, uh, of these linebackers as to what they should do and the leverage of, these safe, uh, of the safeties up here. There's a lot of freedom in these routes. And I've never been in those meeting rooms, but I've been in other meeting rooms where they teach four verts. And these guys, especially in two minutes, and especially with the experience that both Amon Ra and Drake London have, they, they can do all sorts of things. They can stay vertical. They can bend and take the middle. They can... Uh, if the linebacker's in their hip pocket here, they can release out. Or as we saw with both these guys, um, they, 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 they break their routes in and find success that way. This is the coverage. This is the picture. It's two by two. It's the four receivers we talked about last week. They elected to go with Vavai Milipa in, in, in the backfield, and he's kind of been their two-minute guy. Defensively, this is a double cloud look. So you're having three defensive linemen, you're having just three linebackers, but the big difference is you have one, two, three safeties. So just about in every scenario besides two minute, you're only ever gonna have two safeties. I guess technically you could have a third safety at the nickel spot, but these are three true safeties. They're gonna have deep third, middle third, deep third. And then the reason I highlighted these three defenders right here in red, is they both, all, they, they all three have unique leverages that ultimately dictate why this play happens the way it does. Both these corners have inside leverage on these receivers. The why behind that is they are trained to, if this number two receiver right here breaks out on a quick little five yard out route, they will jump that and try to take that away. Why is that su such a big deal? It's a big deal because in two minutes, you're always trying to get to the sideline. You're always trying to get out of bounds. And so these corners are specifically in that leverage to try to take that away or at least make it harder. If they're outside leverage, they can get trapped by a receiver blocking them and it makes it harder for this corner to defend this out route. So it's noteworthy to, to, to show that these corners have slightly inside leverage. It's just a matter of like a yard, but that yard's a big deal in terms of whether or not they can guard this quick out and, and not, get, uh, not get blocked by the outside receiver. The other guy I want to reference is this, uh, this field linebacker. It's funny, so Keaton Slovis, he elects to go to Amon Ra's side over here, which you can't, you can't go wrong, but if this is me, I'm going to Drake London's side. And as you guys can see from this picture, it's, it, the, the reason's very simple, it's just math. If you drew a line down the middle of the field, how many, how many guys are to this side, or how many defenders on the slot are to this side? One, and then maybe two. You draw a line on this side, there's one, two, and then three guys that can get into play. That's why if I was, um, if I, if I was uh, Keen Slovis, I would have gone to the field with this throw. He does not, that's fine, this is still a good look. Obviously, USC's uh, best offensive player there. And what happens and why this works is both these linebackers are kind of dropping in this angle. They're supposed to get hands on these, these slot receivers. They do a poor job at it, to be honest. You would expect more out of, the, out of these linebackers, but it's tough because both these receivers are great, and then this linebacker's kind of dropping into the middle. 
The one thing I don't like about this Arizona defense is this linebacker, he's out leveraged from the very start. Drake London has a clean release. He's big, physical. This linebacker kind of drops into his area right there, covers this area, and Drake London wraps around. And I'll show the play one more time, but London's wide open. Obviously, Amon Ra gets the completion there, but this is just an old-fashioned four-verts concept. And I guess another uh, tid tidbit, I mentioned, hey, what's your mindset in the beginning if you're Keaton Slovis? It's don't take sacks, it's find the first completion. Well, the third teaching point, if you're a coach, is know where your back is. Find your check down. Peyton Manning made a living off game-winning drives, hitting the back on this dinky little right, uh, on this dinky little route, and finding a bunch of success that way. So if I'm Keaton Slovis, and if it was me in this play, I would have said, hey, I'm working the field. I'm working TV and Drake London because of the spacing, because of the, lev the favorable uh, leverage London has. And if those guys get jammed at all, because it's first and 10, I got all three timeouts in my back pocket. If they get jammed at all, I'm coming down to the back in Vavai, and Vavai, and it's, it's extremely soft. All these guys drop back, it's extremely soft. He's gonna be open all day in the two minute drill if, uh, if, if things get soft there. Doesn't happen that way. Slova selects to go to the left side of the field. They find a nice window right here for Amon Ross St. Brown. It's a big chunk play, fantastic way to start the drive. Love the call for verts because it gives yourself a ton of options. There's a bunch, bunch of answers going on. That's all you can ask for as a quarterback is to have answers. So with all that in mind, let's watch the big first down pickup one more time. Here's Slovis. Over the middle. Nice throw. Amon Ra, St. Brown. There was the first play of the drive. Let's check out the second play. Six. Brown out of at the 40. All right, so after that big chunk play from Keaton Slovis to Amon Ross St. Brown, now the scenario is on, you're on your own 46, or I guess opponent's 46, 105 left in the game, you have two timeouts. No reason to rush, you can't just waste time, but no reason to rush at all. If USC elects to just call a simple run play with an alert to the other side uh, for Keaton Slovis. Some people call this an RPO. I was taught that this is not really a true run pass option. It's a, we are calling this run play. And if the picture is clean enough, you are alerted to throw this route out here. And that's kind of the dynamic uh, in this play. It's a two by two formation. One little difference you'll notice, Amon Ra's on the ball. Brew McCoy is now off the ball. In my opinion, that's to give Brew more time to react and allow him to block the, the to block the corner. If he was on the ball, that block happens really quick. If he's off the ball, it gives himself a little bit more time to react. I don't know if that's the case, and that's what Kerry Colbert's teaching, but that's my educated guess. These receivers to the field, they're just going a hat on a hat. They're blocking these guys. Uh, if this picture is not ideal for Keaton Slovis, he'll just hand this ball off and they'll get what they can get. What's unique to note, and I'll grab my red pen here, is this corner, is in a cover two picture. And you gotta be frustrated if you're an Arizona fan because this is exactly why you call this coverage. You call this coverage to have a corner, cover two corner be sitting right there and jump this out route and not get blocked by Brew McCoy. That is what that corner is taught. That corner doesn't do a good job. Or vice versa, Brew McCoy, he's a big receiver. He does a great job and he's able to block this corner. But you are calling this coverage to prevent exactly this, a quick out route to the sideline, which like we just talked about is very common in two minute because outside here, out of bounds, that stops the clock, that's what you wanna do. And so Keen Slovis, it's interesting, even with a squatted corner, yes, this corner is soft, but with a, or I guess, yeah, even though this corner is soft, Keaton Slovis still elects to throw this ball. That's two plays in a row. You see how much trust nine has in eight because by simple rules, to me, this should not be a throw. It's a cover two picture. This potentially, with an all-American corner, this is a kill shot. He is coming to knock uh, Amon Ra's head off. Obviously, that doesn't happen. Keaton Slovis, it's fine. That's why he's a quarterback and that's why I'm here. He's making those decisions, but it's a two-eye picture. I'm assuming they were probably expecting the run, but we've seen this action a lot. Um, and credit USC, it's a seven-yard pickup. Nice and easy, on pace, just find yourself completions. And uh, let's watch it one more time right here. Six. Near side, Amon Ross St. Brown out of bounds at the 40. The two-minute drill's rolling. USC's marching. Let's check out the next play. Slovis guns it over the middle, caught, and a 
another first. 59 seconds left, starting on the opponent's 41 yard line. You still got two timeouts. Now, if you're Keaton Slovis, you got to start thinking about. All right, field goal range. I'm only down by three. I just can't turn the ball over. That's the worst possible thing you can do. But I love the call once again by Graham Harrell. I believe it's a four birds call. I can't specifically tell by exactly how the play uh, played out, but I'm pretty sure it was a four birds call. But now this time just out of a three by one formation. Drake London, Amon Ross St. Brown, Tyler Vons, then Brew McCoy by himself out here. Biggest difference with this play is Arizona does not do that three cloud look. They don't have the three safeties. Now they have four down linemen. They're saying, all right, we gotta play real life football. We gotta get a pass rush on Keaton Slovis. We can't just hang back there and get picked apart like they've been doing this drive. One of the big things to notice right away is this safety play. What did we see last week? What did we see in this breakdown a week ago? We saw Drake London go down the middle of the field because the safety had gone this way and now Drake was the winner right here on a completion. So what do the Wildcats do? The Wildcats adjust, right? And they keep this safety over Drake London the whole time. And I guess he's, he, he, he's, he's getting a little bit of depth, but he's over 15. He's not splitting the difference on this side of the field. It's a key thing to note because it ultimately opens up Amon Ra as the winner in this play. That's the safety right there. Other thing to, to note, and this is kind of uh, nerding out in football stuff right here. This Sam Backer, it's actually a nickel Sam. It's a DB body. He's uh, just personnel wise. That's why he's flexed out. He is outside leverage of Amon Ra right here. Why is that the case? Grab the red pen. It's the case because basically he is man on man with Amon Ra right here, as is this corner right here. They're gonna bracket Drake London in the slot right here. These two guys outside, they're pretty much man to man. So he, and he does not wanna get beat to the outside leverage because he does have safety help right here. That's why this nickel Sam is outside leverage right there. But that leverage ultimately works against him and is the reason Amon Ra is able to uh, get this catch. And as we see this play play out, Drake London pr presses vertical. This Mike linebacker looks to get hands on. Drake makes this play right here by crossing the face of the Mike linebacker. Mike linebacker drops, he goes underneath this Mike linebacker. Why is that important? Because the Mike is forced to put hands on by his rules and he's forced to stick on Drake London. If Drake went over the Mike linebacker, then his eyes might fall into this window and his body might fall into this window and prevent the completion here to Amon Ross St. Brown. Doesn't happen, good coaching, good execution by Drake. He goes under and saw, sorry the drawing's getting uh, a little out of hand there, but I'll, uh, I'll race that, you guys know the picture there. But because of the outside leverage and because Drake London swallows up the mic and the safety, this window right here is the winning window for uh, Amon Ra to just break off his route and sit in that pocket. This is a vertical route that he's reading leverage and sitting in this pocket. It's a great scheme. Uh, once again, tapping into that four vertical mindset. And Amon Ra, your best offensive player, finding a window there, but it takes a unit, takes an execution. And you can see how this Arizona staff's watching film. And when you beat the Sun Devils on this route last week, Arizona has to respond. They respond in this fashion, and it opens up this route um, in, in uh, the next week's two-minute drill. So cool football nerd stuff there. Big time pickup right there. With all this in mind, let's check out, uh, let's check out that play one more time. Slovis guns it over the middle, caught, and another first. Let's keep the drive rolling. Next play, let's check it out. Deflation. Slovis looking, steps up, delivers, sideline, caught, Amon Ross St. Brown. All right, so Keaton gets away with one right there. That should have been an interception. That should have lost you the ball game and been a costly mistake. Which leads me to my first point. If you're Keaton Slovis, now you're on the 24-yard line. You got 41 seconds. You got two timeouts. That's an eternity. You're not in a rush. And you're in field goal range. So you just cannot make a costly mistake. That's the number one thing right here. Do not throw an interception. Protect the ball because you're in field goal range. And uh, worst comes to worst, put it in the kicker's hand and go to overtime. With that being said, let's break down the read. I guess first and foremost, the coverage. Arizona is trying to establish a little bit more confusion. Uh, it's a new front here, but why I say confusion? They got two linebackers close to each other. They got two safeties close to each other. I think they're trying to just 
get Keaton thinking. Don't have it be a crystal clear picture so he can make an easy read. With that being said, if you're Keaton, you kind of know the coverage you're going to get. You're going to get that three cloud again. you got three safeties working a third, a third, a third back here. And then you got both linebackers kind of dropping into their hook curl areas. The read is this. And I should first start out by saying, I don't know exactly what's happening on this side. It's hard to tell with the TV copy. It looks like it's a, it's a dig and then a, a deeper dig on the outside, but this could have been a curl route or a vertical that Tyler Vaughn's broke off. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening on this side, but this is what I think is happening. So the read itself, this is your two high side. This is your two high beater. This is your one high beater. Right away, when I walk up to the line, if I'm Keaton Slovis, and I know I'm getting three cloud, a third, a third, a third, and two squatted corners, I know right away that this is not the perfect look. This is gonna be much harder to find a winning window. So right away, even before the ball snap, he should be thinking, hey, if things go gray, let me get this ball to my back. If things go gray, let me check it down to Vi and just move on. He doesn't do that, and in my head, this is how he's interpreting things. He's saying, all right, this is my two high beater side. I got a vertical, and I'm gonna try to smoke a whole shot right in there to Brew McCoy. That, to me, is the first thing going through his mind. He's also thinking, if this corner gets soft at all, I'll just hammer a five-yard out route to, to Amon Ross St. Brown and move on. That's gonna be awfully hard to do with a corner that's squatted down. So for me, I'm thinking Keaton say, man, I can get this whole shot. Once again, that's going to be really hard to do because you got a safety screaming over there to protect against exactly that. So that's why I don't like this side. And obviously it should have been an interception. So not a lot to like over there, but I, I trust his eyes. If he's thinking he can get this whole shot, fair enough. But even if he goes to that side, the second it's covered, he should find his back and just move on. So even with that side in mind, what would take you back here? To me, I'm thinking this is more your, your one high beater side. And when I say one high, that means one safety versus two. In this picture, we have three, but it's still deemed a one high safety structure and different coaches coach it differently. But with one safety coming to the middle of the field, I would interpret this as one high and therefore I would have gone back here with my eyes and worked one, two to three with the hope that Drake London can take one defender, likely two on this dig route, and Tyler Vaughn's coming from outside on the deep dig route can find a window somewhere in here. That would be how I would think about this play of one, two to three, the whole time knowing that if things get gray at all, let me find my back and move on. That's the read, almost a costly mistake there. The answer would have been checking it down to Vi, getting four yards, he would have got out of bounds because he's close to the sideline. And uh, that's how I would have done the play. Obviously, Keaton steps up, gets very fortunate with throwing one over uh, over there. And so with that read in mind, let's check out the play one more time. Deflation. Slovis looking, steps up, delivers, sideline, caught, Amon Ross St. Brown. All right, fifth play of the drive. Let's check it out. Wow. USC punches it in for a touchdown, little inside zone run to Vavai Melipei, and uh, it's a great execution by USC. But right there on that last play, you had 28 seconds left, you had two timeouts, it was first and goal, your whole playbook's open, you really could have called whatever you want because you have those timeouts in your back pocket, and as we, uh, we saw in that play, that Arizona defense is very soft especially down there in the red zone. You have about five, maybe six guys in the box with all the linebackers so wary of these receivers and where they need to drop that uh, you catch the defense on the heels and USC is able to punch it in. But a great two-minute drive. Keaton Slovis gets away with the mistake there two plays ago. But ultimately, he gets it done in another successful two-minute drive for USC that results in a game-winning touchdown.